seen a post this morning on Facebook from my buddy Nate Jones Hopper. He's talking about um, some people that he's kind of mentoring and how they all of a sudden they're the expert builders. <laughs> it just made me laugh. It made me laugh. I was like, well, son, now you know, bud. Me and Nate, Nate's like six seconds younger than me, and I call him son. He calls me dad. It's a joke. It's a running joke between the two of us. Well, <clears throat> on that same topic line, um, I had a guy that is, one, building an amp by himself, and he's he shows up about once a week, and he's always got a question on how to go about doing this or that, and I, you know, you give him pointers. That's what you do. That's the basis of this game. If you learn something and somebody asks you a question, you give them an honest answer. I don't, how hard is that? Well, one of the things he asked me the other day was how to work with this stuff. The title in the video already gave it away. I know it did. This is RG316, this little tiny stuff. Works great for moving RF around inside the amplifier. This is RG316DS. It's a little bit thicker. And the DS stands for dual shield. Okay, single shield, dual shield. Really tight woven braid. This is the little brother to the RG400, which is a little brother to RG393. I mean, if you're gonna run just a 100 watt radio in your truck, this stuff is great. And you never wanna go any bigger than that. Little short little runs, just a few hundred watts, this stuff is, this, it's great, it's good stuff. Well, <clears throat> then I just had another guy call me and say, hey, how do I go about putting that, that, that fancy coax that you, you can use the word fancy into a 667. And I said, I've done that in many videos and shown that, but I've never done it in a specific video. Which means if I don't do it in a specific video, then I gotta tell you to go look at 35 Sweet 16 or 667 videos, okay? So I thought, well, I gotta stay true to what I told Nate to do, which was told him to be patient, be kind, and be helpful. Even if the student shows up and says, you don't know what you're doing, I figured out it works better like this. And what they're thinking about is just the one particular thing that they're working on. They're not thinking about the overall bigger picture that you're trying to school them up for. So homeboy, my brother, son, Nate, be patient, my man. It all works out in the end. Even if you're always a nice guy, never say anything negative about anybody, and then you go out and do some YouTube videos where you interview some people and everybody's talking smack because they say you're arrogant. You gotta smile and nod and be humble. That's all there is to it. Okay, let's take a hot minute and let's get down here and let's think about this. So the possible tools that you're gonna need to work with this stuff. Obviously, a good pair of wire dikes. Always handy little tiny needle nose, little tiny screwdriver or a, a very sharp awl, set of wire strippers, possible pair of scissors, and a sharp razor knife. They might come in handy, that's all I'm going to say. Now I can do this entire sequence of process with just the wire strippers. So one way of doing it obviously is you're going to take your razor knife and you're going to very carefully score all the way around the outside of the, the coax. You're going to cut this clear jacket off and expose the shield. Another way to do it is you're going to take your, on the DS, you're going to take the coax, put it in the wire strippers, put it in the 12-14 hole, push down on it, pull. And this is your little data tag. The outer jacket is made of some version of Teflon that isn't printable to it, so then they insert this data tag in here, which is a little tiny piece of captain tape. So the DS goes in the 12-14 hole in the stripper, okay? And then in 14-16, this is the DS, this is standard RG316, you're going to put it in the 14-16 hole, push down, lift up just a little bit, strip. Okay, so now we've stripped off our coax. We've removed the shield from the outside of the coax. Pretty straightforward. Now when I was describing this to him on the phone, both of these guys, I used the term cleave. Now, in the rest of the world, when you use the term cleave, you're talking about cutting. 
So let me show you how to cleave the coax. For demonstration purposes, we're gonna lock this in a vise. I don't even bother to do this. I freehand it anymore. But for the, the first time beginner, take the solder, you're gonna put it to the tip of the iron, right at the joint where the wire and the iron meet, and you're gonna flow a little over and just let it flow down into the shield. And we're gonna wait for that to cool. I call this tinning. I think that's a universally accepted term. We're gonna tin the shield, okay? So now we've tinned the shield. Now we're gonna cleave it. Once again, get out our wire strippers, or if you don't have the right size wire strippers, just get out a nice sharp razor blade and we're gonna take and we're gonna just spin it and we're gonna score the outside of this right on the solder. Just score it, you're not cutting it, you're just scratching it. Give it a little bit of a twist. It'll break the, break the shield off and it'll slide right off. And now you got yourself a perfectly clean solderable joint. So you can solder this down to a board and then attach this to you know, your coax connector, your relay, whatnot. The other way to do it is with your wire strippers. Once again, you're gonna put it down here in the uh, four to 16 size hole, just like this. We're gonna rock it forward, rock it back, forward and back, and slide. Good, I was waiting for this to happen. So now this is stuck on here, but you see it's broken. Remember, this center conductor is made of Teflon. And this is like a Chinese torture, you know, Chinese handcuff from when we were kids. You go to the Chinese restaurant and get the thing that you could stuff your fingers into and it pinch down. Same thing's taking place, but with the solder. So when this happens, we get out our trusty, dusty soldering iron. We go to the point that we've cleaved, just heat it up, and it slides right off. This wire is very fine. It's very easy to stretch out this, the, the center dielectric, this insulator. So you shouldn't have to put a lot of stress on it. This is the, D, the, the 316 single shield. Here is the RG316DS. Same exact principles apply, except it's got more shielding on it, which means less loss. We're gonna put it in the 12 and 14 hole on the dikes. It's a lot like this. We're gonna rock it back, rock it forward, up, down, It'll just slide off. Once again, if this gets pinched and it's pulling on the center conductor, just stop. Take your soldering iron, heat up the jacket, and this will slide right off with no pressure on the center conductor. Now, let's say we're in art class and we want to be fancy dancers, okay? Or we're working on, let's say, a 667. The 667 right next to the coax connector has got a terminal that hangs out and you want to solder the shield to it. There's a couple ways to get this done. The way I like to do it, because it's neater but takes a little bit more time, is I'll take some project wire, like 24 gauge. I've even been known to use 18 gauge. Okay, a little copper, soft drawn copper. You can go pick that up at Ace, Coast to Coast, um, any art shop. Um, you, you can even find it in Home Depot. You just gotta look real hard for it, but it's there. I will take, and I will take my wire needle nose, and I'll create a little hook, just a little hook. Take the hook, put it around the coax, and then turn. Turn. Turn, turn, turn. Then I go back and I clean up the edges. Make it so the braid's all nice and tight, neat and clean. See that? See how it's wrapped around that? Nice and nice and tight, nice and titty tight. Grab our trusty dusty soldering iron. Solder to the tip of the iron first, let it flow over to the wire, and it'll solder over. So now you have a nice flexible joint that allows you to go to ground. 
Let me give you another tip. You want to keep this as short as possible. Keep both of these leads as short as possible. All right. Me personally, I'd rather go to ground and have a little bit longer inductor to go up to my connector. But on the back of that 667, what I like to do is I'll put this little ear on it. I'll cut it so it's about yay long. I'll solder to the tab and then I'll take the lead, fold it over and go back down to the coax connector. On the other end, I create a pigtail just like this. The ground lead, positive lead, trim it. Really sharp, sharp wire dikes, not you know, not, not, not grandpa's, we can't use here, I'll use this as an example. We can't use grandpa's needle nose pliers with wire nips in there. This won't get tight enough to cut the little fine, fine hair of wire that's on the inside of this. So when you go to shear this, cut it nice and, cleave it nice and smooth. Once again, we're going to go and get out our trusty dusty wire strippers. And we're going to go to the 24 and the 22 gauge hole at the end press down, pull, and we've exposed our stranded center conductor. Before you do anything, tin the wire. The little tiny wires are really, really, really fine and they have a tendency to snap right off. So that's how you create your little Y joint pigtail on 316 and 316DS. Okay, now let's broaden this out clean up our mess a little bit. That's the way I like to work with it. Now if we were to get out a hand manual, this would be the other way to do it. We're going to strip, we're going to take and bunch the coax up, so we're going to slide the braid down, slide the braid down, and we fold the coax over, fold the coax over, screwdriver, dental pick, sharp awl, something like that. We're going to come in here, we're going to spread these wires apart. We're going to take and expose that center conductor. We're going to slide this out. We're going to create a little hoop. See the little hoop in the coax, guys? Real simple. And just pull it straight out. Straighten this out. Then we fold this with our fingers and then we pull away from it tightly. So we're pinching our fingers together, and we're pulling the wire through it, and we're stretching it down tight. Once again, I only like to tin out here. I don't want to tin this area here, okay? The reason we don't tin that area there is because we want to have a flexible joint right there. This is going to be something that moves around a lot. So we want this to be able to be flexible. If we solder this area up, once we go and move this, it'll break it. Because this will become stiff, and the surface tension of the solder over the strands of hair, once we go and move this, we might get one bend out of it, but then after that it's going to break. So I just tin this area here, and then I want to create my pigtail. Cut that nice and sharp with a nice set of dikes. And then we're back in the same position we were at with the copper wrap. And we'll go and we'll tin this up. And we're done. The nice stuff about working with 316, RG400, RG172, all of these Teflon based coaxes is that we don't have to worry too much about heat. If we use a foam dielectric coax, like gray truck stop coax, when you go to solder to this braid, the heat transfers up and it'll migrate into the foam, which could cause a short. But this stuff is great. This will handle everything a, three, a 667 can put to it. Uh, even a straight four pill doing a full kilowatt, you can use this to move power around on the inside of the amplifier both of these work great. I prefer to use the DS. It's a little bit bigger, has a little bit less loss to it, and I got a little bit more protection with that extra shield, which is just two pieces of braided shield on the outside. That's the basics of working with RG316, the DS version and the single shield version. 
and there's about 25 different versions of this. But once you master these basic skills with working with RG400, like this, and RG316, you're going to fall in love with this coax. You're never going to use anything other than this. I mean, seriously, the foam coax and the that kind of stuff, like this here. Let me go get a piece of it. I'll show you what I mean. Just happen to have a piece of foam coax hanging out of a box over here. This is your standard foam coax. I look at this and I go, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's coax, all right. It's nothing I want to work with. So we'll score the outside of the jacket. We'll cut it lengthwise. We'll split and I'll peel. Now if I tried to solder to this, it's going to melt this center conductor. So you got to be like a ninja with your soldering skills. Ninja. Chinese throwing stars and all that kind of stuff. Because it is not silver plated. Because it is not oxygen free copper. You have to get this connector way hotter to get the, co the, the solder to flow through the jacket. So, there. We flowed some solder onto it. Now we're going to wait. And we are going to wait. And we're going to wait. And we're going to wait some more. Remember, solder is hot. And this foam that's in here melts at about two degrees. And I say that sarcastically, don't anybody quote me on that. Well, it takes a couple hundred degrees of temperature, maybe 150 or something, to melt this foam. So let's try to do the same tricks with this. Bless you. I got my German Shepherd out here with me in my lab. So we're going to try and cleave this away. Oh, no. Oh. oh man, <laughs> why'd this happen? Because I barely nicked the foam with the razor blade and the foam has now been compromised by the heat and so it made a soft spot in the coax. I don't care for this stuff. Never have, never will. Not today, not tomorrow, not ne next week, not next year. The braid is super thin, so then you end up having burbles in it, like so. Incredibly high loss coax. Way superior. But at the end of the day, the whole purpose behind this video was to help teach guys how to work with their RG316 on the inside of an amplifier and the RG316DS. So I got a little bit off topic there at the end, but hopefully this helps you all. Somebody out there, hopefully you learn from this and you're able to implicate this inside your own equipment and you're going to be like, I know how to work with that stuff and I'm going to get some of this coax. You can buy this off Amazon, eBay, they sell it by the foot. It's not too horribly expensive. It is incredibly reliable. It's stupid flexible. And it's got test rated for like a million bend radiuses. Do this a million times. Kind of thing. Food for thought. Gentlemen, I gotta run. You all have a great week. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you. Click, click, click.